Long before Ivy Park came along, Beyonce launched her first clothing line, House of Darion. It kind of just came and went, and some fans were left wondering why the brand no longer exists. I mean, it just kind of fizzled away with no explanation or anything, just faded into darkness. Beyonce's mom, Miss Tina, even had a clothing line at Walmart that faded into oblivion as well. So what happened? You might think Queen Bee would have had everything back then and now for a clothing label to reach epic heights, but it didn't. House of Darion had fashion shows at New York Fashion Week, London Fashion Week, not to mention the brand was stocked in major department stores like Bloomingdale's, Macy's, and Selfridges in the UK. Even with all of that and the star power of Beyonce behind it, it was still a huge flop. Why was that? Prior to launching her athleisure Adidas and Ivy Park collection in 2016, Beyonce teamed up with her mother Tina Knowles and created House of Darion in 2006. With their signature tagline where the sidewalk and catwalk meet, the line was mostly casual wear including embroidered hoodies, trousers with a blend of hip hop influence and feminine details such as embroidery and ruffles. The culture may have decided to collectively forgive and forget Beyonce and Miss Tina for House of Darion, which was officially discontinued in 2012, but let's revisit where it all began. The mother-daughter pair launched the line, named after Tina Knowles' mother, Agnes Darion, in 2004, with the idea that the clothes would be inspired by three generations of women in their family. The clothing line offered wide selections of both casual and formal clothing to young girls and women for the span of six years. And even though the brand ultimately flopped, it officially closed its doors in 2012, it had a good, appropriately timed run. Darion was introduced to the world in 2016 with the tagline where the sidewalk and catwalk meet. What better way to introduce your clothing line to the world than on the Oprah Winfrey show? Darion was also promoted on shows like the Tyra Banks show, which for my Gen Z watchers was a huge deal at the time. So House of Darion had all the right ingredients for a successful clothing line, but why did it flop? Let's get into a few possible culprits with number one being that the brand was out of price range for their target audience base. I remember them debuting their stuff on the Oprah Winfrey show saying that it was affordable for the average person, but the lowest cost of one of their pairs of jeans was $150. Even Oprah kept saying, quote, that's affordable to you, end quote. It seemed like they were trying to market themselves as an average cost regular wear brand when the average person couldn't really afford those prices. Other items averaged around $80 to $130 and their core customers in the urban youth market was not about to drop hundreds for one or two pieces. They also didn't seem to be clear on who their target audience was. The person wearing Flor de Lis hoodie is not the same person wearing a ruffled peachy colored satin dress. As Newsweek pointed out, House of Darion was introduced live on the Oprah Winfrey show of all places and still failed to make a connection with their target audience. Let's get into reason number two why House of Darion failed. Simply put, they had some ugly, garish designs that just did not age well. Many styles for the label were derived from the past three generations of women in the Nolas family, with the name Darion being tribute to Beyonce's maternal grandmother, Agnes Darion. The tagline of the brand was couture, kick, soul, as Beyonce represents the kick, her mother represents the couture, and her grandmother being the symbol of soul. Though House of Darion was inspired by Beyonce's grandmother, it eventually grew to become mainly inspired by Beyonce. The singer said the idea of House of Darion came from Destiny's Child's fans. Queen Bee shared that her audience often inquired about her mother's design, so she wanted to make the items accessible nationwide. Agnes Darion was a self-taught, well-known seamstress catering to private clients in Louisiana. She was accustomed to making tailoring pieces that stood out by decorating the fabrics she used with embellishments such as embroidery, appliques, and smocking. Incorporating materials such as lace, beads, and jeweled buttons, Agnes Darion made her style unique according to the House of Darion official website. Though it was well-intentioned, 
Some have compared House of Darion's signature graphic tees and other motifs to other brands that fizzled out in the mid-2000s, mainly like Ed Hardy. Critics called the line, quote, painful to look at, saying that, quote, every piece has too much going on, too many buttons, ties, logos, etc., end quote. Listen, House of Darion served its purpose, but the glue gun bedazzled phase is over. Urban wear is just not as popular as it was in the early to mid 2000s, which leads me to my next and last point. The heydays of urban street fashion is over. Most urban labels died off in the early 2000s, and some people on online forums such as Lipstick Alley have stated that Darion was giving wet seal in the 90s, which is not the highest compliment. Most urban brands from that era like Rockaware, Sean John, Apple Bottoms, G-Unit and Baby Fat didn't carry over successfully into the late 2000s and early 2010s. Looking back, you can see how those designs looked, well, tacky. The Y2K aesthetic has come back in style thanks to Gen Z, and some brands like Baby Fat and Sean John made somewhat of a comeback, but House of Darion was not one of the ones that saw a resurgence due to their outdated designs. After the House of Darion Jr.'s line was quietly discontinued in 2012 and the rest of the operations winded down officially in the following years, B started an athleisure line in 2016 called Ivy Park with the UK-based international company Topshop. When Ivy Park came about, it actually didn't make much of a statement in the world of athletic clothes or like in the world at all. The line's so-so athleisure wear was modeled largely by skinny white girls in sweatpants and slides, once again not speaking to her core audience. Even though Ivy Park originally launched in the spring of 2016 as a joint venture with the British clothing retailer, it wasn't until 2018 that Beyonce's company Parkwood Entertainment acquired total ownership of the brand. Beyonce announced the most recent iteration of Ivy Park in collaboration with Adidas in April 2019. Since the initial launch, Ivy Park has partnered up with Adidas to carry out its mission of empowering women of all body types to feel and look their best, and each drop continues to set the bar higher for the entire activewear industry through introducing more size-inclusive apparel styles, footwear, and accessories. Not to mention, Ivy Park launch days can be anxiety-inducing for fans since everything sells out almost immediately. It's safe to say that Queen Bee seems wholly devoted to her clothing line, Ivy Park, this time around and devoted to avoiding the fate of House of Darion. Only a few celebrity fashion labels have actually been successful, such as Jessica Simpson, who created a billion dollar empire, Victoria Beckham, who moved on from her Spice Girl roots with her namesake high fashion line, Nicole Richie, who moved past her reality TV party girl image with her line House of Harlow, and Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, who won acclaim from critics and fashion insiders with their high end couture label, The Row. At the end of the day, this is a classic lesson for anyone who's starting any business, not just a clothing line. Just because you have a fan base or a following doesn't mean that it's automatically gonna be successful. It's all about your product and connecting with your community. And above all, making them feel seen. Even though House of Darion fizzled out as fast as it came on the scene, it was the precursor to Fashion Nova and all of the other popular IG boutiques. House of Darion, we love you so. May your memory live on by the way of little known websites and eBay. So tell me what you think about this video down below in the comments. Did you know that Queen Bee and Mama Tina had a previous clothing line prior to Ivy Park? Please remember to like this video, leave a comment down below and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.